Hello again, thanks for joining me as we reflect once more uh, on uh, Matthew, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, and we're up to verse 16. Verse 16 is talks about fasting, and for somebody who, like me, likes his food, it's a, a, a bit difficult to uh, uh, talk about how Jesus um, considers fasting, how important he considers it to be. Uh, when you fast, he says, not if, but when you fast. Do not look sombre as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others that they're fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father, who is unseen. And your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Fasting is one of those uh, spiritual disciplines that can be really, really helpful uh, in uh, kind of underlining the wider impact that I think Jesus is getting at with the Lord's Prayer and with all that he's teaching in the Sermon on the Mount. He wants us to focus on God, not to focus on our bellies, not to focus on how we look to other people, but to focus on God. He wants us to uh, be so uh, concentrated, so um, reliant upon God that that becomes clear in everything that we're doing and that prayer becomes the priority over and above mealtimes even that and it helps us to uh, perhaps when we forgo a meal or, or two it helps us to uh, just concentrate that little bit more on God as we look to him not just for our daily bread but for our daily sustenance in everything again um, as I've mentioned a few times before I like what uh, something that John Stott uh, talks about this section in in his book. Uh, the um, I mean, I've, I've lost it. Um, the Christian prayer is seen in contrast to its non-Christian alternatives. It is God-centered. It is concerned for God's glory, in contrast to the self-centeredness of the Pharisees or the hypocrites. And he says it is intelligent. It is expressive of thoughtful dependence in contrast to the mechanical incantations of uh, the heathen, as Stott puts it. So we, uh, Jesus is calling for our prayers to be centred on God and uh, to be intelligent, to be thought through, not just rambling, um, as perhaps I'm doing at the moment, with, uh, without enough thought, but just to be absolutely centred on God knowing what we're asking of him, knowing what we're committing to him. Sometimes fasting helps us to do that. Um, and uh, it's a great way, again, as I say, of just helping us to demonstrate to him. It doesn't matter who else is watching. We should ignore anybody else who is watching. But it helps us to, to, to demonstrate to God just how committed we are to him. Over and above, as I say, the feeding of our bellies. We want to draw near we want to focus our spirits upon him he's the one to whom we pray he's the one who sees the reality of our hearts and he's the one who knows us and loves us all the same let's pray thank you lord god uh, for the reality of our relationship with you thank you for the depth of relationship as well that you know the you know the truth uh, you know us. So, Lord, please help us not to be so ridiculous to try and hide stuff from you or to try and impress you because you're not taken in. Help us to pray thoughtfully and pray properly. And then, Lord, you promise to hear our prayers. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us and fill our prayer lives, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Uh, great to see you. Um, and uh, I'll speak, share more with you tomorrow. God bless.